we will have an annular solar eclipse, the peak of the Orionid meteor shower, and a partial lunar eclipse, among many other astronomical events for October 2023, so stay tuned to learn more about what will happen in the night sky next. On October 15, we will have a special event called an annular solar eclipse, which occurs when the moon passes in front of the sun, but is too far away from Earth to completely cover the sun's disk from our perspective. This in turn creates a ring of fire effect, wherein a thin ring of sunlight surrounds the dark silhouette of the moon. The eclipse will begin in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of southern Canada and move across the southwestern United States and Central America, Colombia, and Brazil. A partial eclipse will be visible throughout much of North and South America. The eclipse will begin at 1612 Coordinated Universal Time and end at 1946 Coordinated Universal Time. To see the eclipse, you should use proper eye protection such as eclipse glasses or a pinhole projector since looking directly at the sun for too long can cause eye damage. From October 20 to 21, we will have the peak of the Orionid meteor shower, one of the most spectacular meteor showers of the year. It comes from the debris of Halley's Comet, one of the most famous comets in history. The Orionids got its name after the constellation Orion where the meteors appear to radiate from. The shower is active from October 2 to November 7, but peaks around October 21 or 22, when up to 20 meteors per hour can be visible under ideal conditions. The Orionids are known for their speed and brightness and can leave glowing trails or fireballs in their wake. The best time to see the Orionids is after midnight and before dawn when Orion is high in the sky. To best see the meteors, you must find a dark and clear spot away from city lights and look up at the night sky when the moon is not around. The meteors can appear anywhere in the heavens, but you can trace them back to Orion if you want to locate the radiant. However, you don't have to look at the radiant point to see the meteors. On October 24, we will have two events for this night, and the first is Venus reaching its greatest western elongation at 46.4 degrees from the sun, which means it will be at its farthest angular distance from the sun as seen from Earth in the pre-dawn sky. Venus is the brightest planet in the heavens and is visible before sunrise in the east. It will also appear as a half-lit disk, 23.56 arc seconds across, when viewed through a telescope. The greatest western elongation of the moon is the best time to observe the planet in the morning sky, as it will rise earlier and stay longer above the horizon than at any other time. At the same time, the moon and Saturn will have a close encounter in the night sky, forming a conjunction. The moon and Saturn will be about 2 degrees apart, about the width of a finger held at arm's length. The moon will be in its waning crescent phase, about 25% illuminated, and Saturn will have a magnitude of 0.5. You may also be able to see Saturn's rings with a telescope or binoculars. On October 26, we will have a moon perigee where the moon is closest to the Earth. The point at which the moon is closest to the Earth is called the perigee, and the point at which it is farthest from the Earth is called the apogee. During this time, the moon will reach its perigee at 7.29 coordinated universal time when it will be 364,900 kilometers away from the Earth, causing it to appear larger and brighter than usual. The moon will be in its waxing gibbous phase with about 90% illumination. On October 29, we will have another special event called a partial lunar eclipse, when the Earth's shadow falls on the moon, but does not cover it completely. A lunar eclipse can only happen at full moon when the sun, earth, and moon align in a straight line. A partial lunar eclipse occurs when the moon passes through only part of the earth's umbra, the darkest part of the shadow, while the rest of the moon is in the penumbra, the lighter part of the shadow. The eclipse will be visible throughout all of Europe, Asia, Africa, and Western Australia. At the same time, we will have a moon-Jupiter conjunction on the same night where our natural satellite will appear close to Jupiter in the heavens. However, they will be too far apart to spot through a telescope or binoculars. But this does create a magnificent photographic opportunity to photograph Jupiter and the moon simultaneously during the eclipse, like this one, even though the shadow on the moon is not significant but noticeable. Finally, on October 30, the moon will conjunct with the Pleiades star cluster again, but they will be closer this time. However, the bright moonlight of the waning gibbous moon might make it challenging or impossible to capture the star cluster and the moon simultaneously. The moon will be in its waning gibbous phase with 98% illumination during this time. 
So, that is it for this video guys, and I apologize for uploading this video late because I've been really busy with schoolwork recently because I'm now in second year college, and I'm still managing my time. But, I really do hope that you can witness at least some or most of the astronomical events for October 2023, especially the annular solar eclipse, the Orionian meteor shower, and the partial lunar eclipse that's visible throughout most of the world. And so, without further ado, I wish you good luck, clear skies, and enjoy the universe before your eyes, and see you next time.